I can't take you serious with the pigtails. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> God damn you. All right. Welcome to WTF Stories and Advice. I'm Caroline Cranshaw. And I'm Daryl Gove. And we are two hypnotherapists that like to talk shit, basically, <laughs> and talk about random news and answer your questions when you write into us. Because we have an opinion on everything. <laughs> don't we ever. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like some of you don't. So if you do have an opinion and you love us, then give us five star rating. We need more ratings so more people can find us. And if your opinion is that you don't like us, then don't do that. Just don't don't leave a rating. Five star only, please. Thank you. And if you don't like us, why the fuck are you listening to this right now? I mean, seriously. <laughs> Sounds like you have a little you're a glutton for punishment. A little bit of a sadist. Or is it a masochist? Which one is it? It depends on who you're doing it to, right? Yeah. So like sadism, I think, is when you're hurting someone else. Or, yeah. Or yeah, causing pain and then And then masochist is, is when you're doing it to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, if that's your problem, then you have bigger problems than whether or not you like this podcast. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we have a listener a letter that we are going to discuss. Ooh. And I'd like to know your opinion on this, Daryl. It's very interesting. Should we just launch I'm in? I'm intrigued. <laughs> yes. Do I need to have my butt clenched or can it be relaxed for this letter? I think it can be relaxed, but I don't know how relaxed your butt gets, so. <laughs> how tense is it going to be? Is it like shit your pants scary or is it going to be, it's okay, you can wind down? No, it's not shit your pants scary. So that's good. Okay, good. It's not scary Everybody, at all. if you're listening to this, you may also unclench. <laughs> Unless you being anal retentive is part of your identity, in which case you just keep that clenched. It's fine. Whatever floats your boat. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay, go. Dear Caroline and Daryl, I am a 33-year-old woman who's recently got engaged to the man of my dreams. He's perfect in every way, kind, caring, understanding, and loves me deeply. Not to mention tall, good-looking, with a great career. However, I recently discovered his little foot fetish is way worse than I realized, and it's starting to make me question whether we're truly compatible. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He likes little feet. <laughs> He's got a fetish for little feet. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't like know. Like in China before the communists, they used to um, bind their feet. The women used to bind. Yeah, they used to like the bind feet, the foot binding, didn't they? Where they do it when they were a kid, they kind of break the foot and oh, bind it, and so they had these horrible. tiny little feet. Yeah, yeah, I was so. Yeah, I know. I remember we had to learn about it in school quite a bit, and it was quite Did you? sad. Oh yeah. In my eyes, because I have read this letter before, <laughs> I think it's she's saying little foot fetishes in like she didn't think it was that big of a deal. And then she's realizing it's way bigger than she realized. Okay. Okay. okay? Carry on. Yeah. When we first started dating, he mentioned that he liked feet. And I didn't think that much of it at the time. But over the past few months, his obsession with feet has gotten way worse. He constantly wants to touch and kiss and lick my feet. And now the only way he can orgasm is by humping my feet starting to make me really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I've tried to talk to him about it, but he gets defensive and tells me it's just a harmless fetish and I'm overreacting. Do you think it makes her uncomfortable because it's tickly or <laughs> like physically uncomfortable? <laughs> or is it making her emotionally uncomfortable? I think it's making her emotionally uncomfortable, but I have very ticklish feet. And so I could never have a serious relationship <laughs> with someone with a foot fetish because I would just laugh and be like, ah! <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I do think it's a very good thing to be able to have a laugh having sex, you, to have a laugh, but being made to laugh by having your feet tickled. <laughs> well, someone's that real serious about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The situation has become even more complicated as I have noticed him staring at other women's feet, including my friends and even my mother's. Okay. He had an obvious erection the other day after my mother showed him her new pedicure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for laughing. Oh, we have to cut this. Sorry, I can't laugh at that. Oh, no. Yeah, well, I think oh, you no. could laugh. 
I, I, it's not it's not to do with the, the feet thing it's just the fact that it's your mom like that's <laughs> yeah. just not it's not it's just it's never a good sign when someone gets a boner when they see your mom N- no unless it's your dad but then you don't want to know about that oh no thankfully she didn't notice but it makes me feel disgusted and like I'm not enough for him. I don't want to be with someone who objectifies women or makes me feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, I don't want to lose the love of my life over something that may seem trivial to others. I'm too embarrassed to tell my friends as I know they'll laugh their asses off and won't be able to keep it a secret. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Uh, that would right be my to us. Uh, that would be my fear too. I just know. <laughs> I know I could tell you if I was struggling with something like that, but any of my girlfriends would laugh and laugh and then fucking tell everybody. You know, I I talk to clients all the time about this exact issue and similar issues, and it's never funny in clinic. I think it's only funny because when Caroline describes. <laughs> these things to me because I'm so suggestible I immediately make extremely clear (laughs) pictures of everything she's saying in my mind and it's just so in my face (laughs) Uh (laughs) I'm the same and I'm making faces at you (laughs) while we do this so that probably doesn't help (laughs) and I'm wearing pigtails and it wears wally top (laughs) I wonder how I will be able to get pregnant will I have to scrape that (laughs) <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Well, I have to scrape the sperm <laughs> off my feet and put it in a turkey baster. <laughs> oh, I think we have to start again. We have to start not laughing. <laughs> she obviously no. has a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. She can't. Yeah, she yeah. must be joking. <laughs> or not. I was single for years and went on tons of dates to finally meet a man that was everything I thought I wanted. I was so smug thinking I had found the perfect man and now it feels like the joke's on me. He told (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. This is is why more people don't write in Caroline. This is why. (laughs) Sorry. Okay. 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 I'm serious. I am not, I am not laughing at you. I promise. But this is pretty funny. Okay. You have to admit. Wait. Hang on. Sorry. Sorry. You gotta hear this last bit. You gotta hear it. He just told me he wants to buy a nail salon as an investment, and I'm having visions of him walking around, women getting pedicures with a huge boater sticking out of his pants. Oh, no. No, okay, hold on. Oh. I, that, that, I reckon somebody winding us up. And he wouldn't <laughs> even tell his wife. I want to... Yeah, because <laughs> the, everything else seems genuine, and then that's a very common issue when it comes between couples. But then to have this issue and then go, oh, P.S., I want to buy a nail salon. I'm like, either he has no respect for, for her over the issue or it's the wind up. But carry on. Sorry. We can, we can talk about it after. I would really appreciate some advice on how to navigate this situation. Please tell me if I'm overreacting and being a prude. Should I try to work through this with him or is it a deal breaker? And should I cut my losses and run? If I leave, what the fuck do I tell people without everyone laughing behind both of our backs? Sincerely, traumatized Tootsies. <laughs> she is funny. She's got a sense of humor. She's got a sense of humor. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not. I don't laugh in clinic either. No, you know what? I do a little bit. <laughs> I have to admit. But yeah, I but laugh. not at your client's no, stories. No, with the clients. And we both yeah. have a laugh. Yeah, I'd never laugh while someone sits there crying. Because... Life, while tragic, is fucking funny. And if we can't laugh at these situations that come up for us, then yeah, all, all hope is gone, right? I don't know. That's how I deal with stressful situations, is I tend to laugh. Like, I've been kicked out of a couple of funerals for laughing uh, hysterically and not being able to stop my family members. 
Okay, what's the what's the advice, Daryl? Okay, so I just keep getting the turkey baster on the feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, the, the the first thing is to to say that no, we don't think it's nothing. Mm. So that like you're saying like her friends might think it's nothing, um, or that you've been pretty well. Like, to be fair, from my point of view, everyone has different things that they're into or not into. Everyone has different limits and boundaries, and if it means something to you, it means something to you. You know, if to you it's uncomfortable, then it's uncomfortable to you. And that's what matters. It shouldn't really matter what anybody else thinks. Likewise, if it's something that you can get over or get into, then nobody else's business but yours. But if that was likely to happen without hypnosis, then you probably wouldn't have contacted us. Yeah. So... Well, apparently it's really common. Like foot fetishes are one of the most common fetishes there is. And it makes a lot of sense. If you think about you know, a hundred years ago in Western society, maybe just over, women were covered up from head to toe. You know, they had their hair covered, they had all the way down to their feet. And so when their ankles showed, the ankle was very sexual. And so even, you know, like a little bit of flesh <laughs> down there, it's it's it was it has been seen as sexual for a long time. Talking about Chinese customs, you know, until again a hundred years ago. Uh, women had their feet bound in Chinese culture. I don't know if it was the whole country, but certainly in a big portion of it. So that I think the idea was so that men could fuck them, the, the bound feet. It would make them into little vaginas. And so it's something that ha has been culturally accepted and going on for a long, long, long time. From that point of view, I can't say it's excessively abnormal. Freud believed that it was due to when a child saw their mother's genitals and was shocked that they didn't have a penis. Obviously, he must be referring to boys, because I think it's way more common in men to have a foot fetish. They develop a fixation on objects or body parts that look like penises. So Freud's theory was that it occurred because they saw the foot or toes as a penis substitute. <laughs> if you want a little Freudian history... Oh, but yeah, just Freud just comes up with all these ways to diagnose people based on his own fucked up childhood, clearly, because it's just, I don't know, I just, as soon as the word Freud comes into it, I start to doubt whether there's going to be any <laughs> decent information about the subject. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, somebody doesn't have a penis. Oh, like, that's what that foot is. I want to fuck the foot. No, that doesn't add up to me. But um, it's interesting. <laughs> he always thought everything was penis envy, right? <laughs> like for women, it's penis yes. envy. And for men, then if they don't have a penis, then you need to obsess on something that didn't have a penis. But I only had daughters. I now have stepsons, but I wasn't there when they were like at the baby phase. But I had several close friends who had children around the same time as me and their sons, one in particular. And I always like painted my toes and wear sandals Would whenever I would come over, he'd come running out and check out my toes and look at my toes and play with my toes and try to lick my toes. And I was like, your kid is going to have a foot fetish. And maybe it's they're just down on the ground and it's something there and it's shiny nails. And so and it's like the first thing that causes arousal in them. And then they, I don't know, get a little baby erection. And then it's like kind of blueprinted in the mind that this is something that is sexually exciting. I've had quite a lot of clients with the issue. And from what most of them say, they, there is no specific event. Mm. It's just something that they've always, as long as they can remember, they've liked feet or had an attraction. And same when people hate feet as well, by the way, lots of foot phobias. Yeah. And sometimes there's an event with that more often like uh, they burnt their foot or they stood on a nail or something like that. But for the most part, it's been from very, very early years. And if you think about the brain and where the, the receptors are stored, so you've got different receptors for different parts of your body, and you've got a whole lot of surface area in your brain for your feet and your hands because they're, you know, they're doing a lot. They need lots of detail. They're, lo they're processing a lot more information. And historically, humans you know, you're you're getting so much information from your feet, walking barefoot through the jungle, through the forest, what you're stepping on. And all it takes in the brain to wire two things together is for two things to happen at the same time. So some arousal and some sensation on the feet or some visual 
of the feet and and mirror neurons going off. So it could just be so easy and accidental. I was watching a documentary on cystic fibrosis on this guy that was into S&M, sadism and masochism. And apparently heaps of people with cystic fibrosis have are into S&M because while they're going through puberty and they're masturbating and they're learning about their body, they're in a lot of pain. And so it wires the pleasure and pain together. I don't know how true it is. This is just what the documentary claimed. But I can see that happening with feet or hands or other parts of the body. It's It could be quite easy for the brain just to wire pleasure and feet, pleasure and hands, pleasure and boobs. Oobs. Oh, boobs. Boobs. I know, I know it sounds weird that people would like those sacks of milk, but... <laughs> Um, some some people do. Not just Usually men, sometimes women. Sacks of milk. Anyways, the other thing that's been <laughs> recently know. discovered is that by a neuroscientist, I can't remember who it was, but that the part of the brain that processes the sensation that people get from feet is actually right next to the area that perceives genital simu- stimulation. So they're very mm-hmm. close together and there may be some neurons or some type of... I don't know, network that's connecting and is is connecting those two. Well, it, it makes sense. There's, you know, in Holland, they send sex workers to the disabled people. It's paid for by the government. Nice. And I watched a documentary where there was this disabled guy, I may have mentioned this in the podcast before, and he didn't have a penis. So, you know, or he was it that he didn't have a penis or was it that he was um, from the waist down paralyzed? But either way, she managed to get him to have an orgasm by playing with a body part, which in the brain was next to where the penis would be. In this case, it was the ears. So she played with his ears until he had an orgasm and, and she knew how to do this. And yeah, so we already know this happens, right? If, if in your brain, the part that does all the processing for your feet is next to the genitals, then yeah, it can wear them together very easily. And then you're going to get pleasure from other people's because, well... Mer neurons, and this is how you're you're growing up. This is how you're wired. Mm. So, what's our advice for her? So that's not going to help her. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't need to know how it started. I mean, maybe she does. I don't know. I do just want her to think from the point of view that it's probably not his fault. It's probably not a choice. I think it would be impossible to to imagine this to be a choice that somebody would make consciously. It's just how he's wired, and it may not be something that he can change. It may not be something he wants to change. It may not be something he's willing to change or able to. So the question is, first and foremost, are you going to go out and end this relationship, go back on the market, find this other perfect in every way guy and wait some time and then find out what he's got wrong with him? And what if it's worse? (laughs) Because, you know, everybody has shit, right? Nobody is perfect. And if they were perfect then they would be boring this is something you can work through this is definitely something you can work through my advice is to start off with think of this as something fixable i would agree if he's perfect in every other way but it sounds like there needs to be some boundaries and i mean him getting a heart on over your mother's feet is that that's what i would find the most upsetting and then saying he's going to open <laughs> a nail salon sorry I shouldn't laugh. But those are those are two quite different things. So getting a hard on, that's that's not his fault, right? It's maybe his fault if he looked at them, but that's his natural reaction that he can't control. Whereas wanting to open a salon, that's I think that's him actually making fun of something. I think that's disrespectful to you, knowing how you feel about it, assuming that he fully knows how you feel about it. That's quite disrespectful. It's like it's like imagine another relationship and someone like loves boobs. He just loves boobs, and you catch him looking at other women's boobs, and then he goes, "I want to open a topless go-go bar." No, that's not <laughs> respectful. So it's no, that's just if if that's true, then the relationship isn't as perfect as you think. I'm sorry. I mean, my advice is go to therapy. Mm-hmm. Go to therapy. Work, try to work through it because I do think it is something you can get past. But also, you really need to convey like how hurtful that is that he's, you know, getting excited by your mother's feet. And 
yes, I totally get it that that's into. And I wonder if he's ever been with someone who's accepted that about him, or maybe he hasn't really been open about it. And now he is and you're marrying him, or at least planning on it. And he's just getting excited and he can finally be him his real self. And it's just getting a bit OTT. Yeah. So I think it's like, I love you. I understand you're into this. But I'm getting upset with your reactions. I'm feeling upset about the thought of Yeah, like you're saying, if a man was obsessed with boobs, and then he's going to open a topless bar. Well, you're going to obviously have some problems with that. And go to therapy and see if you can work through it. And if you can't work through it, then at least you did everything you could. A big thing I'll see people about is trying to get over relationships and they just cut things off too soon and they mm -hmm. didn't really give it a go and then they regret it. And then the person like meets someone else right away and then they realize that they made a mistake and they're devastated because they know that they actually threw away a really good relationship. Now, I think if you're meant to be together, it just, it all works out. If destiny says that you're meant to be with that person, then it doesn't really matter what happens. You'll end up back together. Could be. I don't know if I believe. Could be. I, but I think, but don't use that as an excuse not to work. I guess that's what I'm, think, what I'm feeling. Uh, relationships are always work. If mm -hmm. they're not, I think you're not bringing everything to the table. Like someone is hiding stuff or not really dealing with stuff, or maybe that's just certain people's journey is they don't have a lot of conflict in relationships. But I think most relationships have conflict and there is that that phase where you're in the honeymoon phase and everything's amazing. And then you move into the power struggle, right? And now, right now, mm -hmm. it sounds like you guys are in the power struggle. And most people, when they get to this, they run away. Yeah. And they think that's it. That's not the right person for me, obviously. You know, I just need to meet someone else. And if you can get through that power struggle, or at least give it a good go, because good men, like what you described, aren't easy to find. And you can you can do this whole journey, right? Because it will it will be a journey, but it can be a fun one. Like start by listening to this podcast together and laughing, and um, unless you think that he'll be really embarrassed, but and hate us. But what you can do is just make sure that you've got your own boundaries, right? So like, it sounds like you've been happy to use your feet during sexual activity, and it sounds like to him that's the only way he can come. Is, is that the only way or is it his preferred way? You know, and are you happy for him to use your feet? And if so, is, is there a boundary to that? How often or in what way? So come up with boundaries that make you feel comfortable as you approach this. And probably you wrote to us because you're thinking, okay, maybe we need therapy. Maybe he doesn't want to go because that, that would be very common for the man to say, I'm not going to therapy. There's nothing wrong with me or there's nothing wrong with this. And there may not be nothing in commas wrong with him. But if there's an impact on the relationship, then, you know, there's something wrong with the relationship. So that needs looked at together and with love. And so, yes, I, I just don't think that that can be resolved between you just by listening to us. I don't think there's anything specific that we can say. I do think you need an expert. I, I have to plug my friend, Alessandra. She's the, <laughs> the sex expert on Married at First Sight. And she is just amazing. She's got this brilliant book called Sexo, where she just talks about all the different erogenous zones of the body and all about sex, basically. And I think that would be some good research for you guys. I haven't, I, I don't think it's available in English. So hopefully you speak Spanish. But otherwise, yeah, yeah. Making sure that the therapist that you choose is well versed in sex. For example, Caroline. <laughs> yeah, but maybe not me because I <laughs> laughed way too much. And not that I would. Maybe she'll like that. With couples. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm happy to work one on one, but I think after reading the letter and cracking up, I, but I mean, I can do it. Yeah. But I think I would try to find someone local to wherever you are and go in person if you can. If you can't, then that's absolutely fine as well. But try to find somebody local and try to find somebody who can work with the subconscious as well. But I think he obviously doesn't want to hurt you. I think he's just getting over excited with the whole thought of it and is allowed, he has really let himself go into it. But it does sound like it's, it's spiraling a bit or becoming way more 
extreme. But I'd really find a time where you can sit down and talk about it, maybe have a few drinks before, because <laughs> sometimes people are a little more receptive. Mm -hmm. That's not always the best advice, but go do some mushrooms or some MD. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, always um, something to alter the state can be helpful for a tough convo. I, I'm a bit concerned. What if he met her and and he met you and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, the foot thing's fine. Oh, yeah, this is new. I'm falling in love. I don't mind. Yeah, whatever. It's a bit weird, but it's okay. And he's like, oh, my God, finally, I've met somebody that's okay with my fetish. I'm going to marry her. And then you go, I'm turning off the, the toe tap. <laughs> Um, I'm going to turn off the <laughs> the, <toe tap. laughs> the feet flow. <laughs> I'm going to, the only soul you're going to see is my heavenly one. And then what happens if he's like, oh, well, I don't want to marry you now because that's why I liked you. I mean, obviously you sound lovely. It's There's much more to you. Men can be like that. Yep. Fixated on one thing that they want. Chris Rock has a saying. Women don't like to go backwards financially, and men don't like to go backwards sexually. So once it's on the menu, it's on the menu, right? And <laughs> I maybe bring up the mother thing. I got really uncomfortable. And then you saying you want to open a nail salon. And I'm just worrying that you're going to be out there cheating on me with someone else's feet. And I love you. I want us to have the best possible relationship. So I just think we need to make sure that we're both happy and we can have have some support to have the best relationship we possibly can. Because people always wait too long before they go to therapy. They wait until the relationship is literally yeah. at the breaking point and that there is just all that needs to happen is one more thing and it's done. There's no coming back from it. And then they decide to go. And that is like the not the right time to go. You need to go when you just start having some issues mm -hmm. or go before you have issues just to work through a few things because then you're not going to get to that breaking point. And that's the biggest mistake people make. And they think, oh, well, that's weak or I don't need to go. Yeah, they just dismiss it. But it is one of the most important things you can do. And if you do it early on in your relationship, or before, I mean, this is why a lot of churches have this like premarital counseling, and they help you work through a lot of things and, and get really clear on things. And I think that yeah. is a great concept. And I think everybody should do it, regardless of what your religion or your belief system is. I think so. But women, before they get married, they like to, they go on a diet, they go to a personal trainer, they go to every type of beautician there possibly is to look their best. But how much time are you investing into having a really great relationship, not just what you're going to look like on the day? And I'm not saying this person is like that at all, but that's what I see. And meanwhile, their relationship is having issues. And I think it's, you'd do way better to put some effort into having a great relationship. Mm -hmm. And if he's not that keen, here's a thought of how you could approach that. You, know, you could say something like, I require a, a high quality relationship. If you're going to be in a relationship with me, it's going to be high quality. And what that looks like to me is openly communicating, especially when there's a conflict or an issue. And if we can't resolve that between us, whether it's now or any time in the future, and we've tried everything that we can, then we're going to get some help. We're going to go and get some therapy. We're going to get an expert to help us resolve it. What do you think? And then just see what he says. I, I just try to beg people or bug them or please, can you come to therapy? Nag them. I just don't think that's going to work. But kind of putting your foot down, saying that the the foot thing is <laughs> put your foot down. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> just come out in some really strappy heels with a fresh pedicure and be like, baby, <laughs> want to play with my feet? Well, you got to go to this session first. If he refuses, full stop. <laughs> to go to therapy. And you could just say, I just want to have make sure we have the best relationship possible. So I just thought we could have a few sessions to just make sure everything's great. And we have the best communication and the best foundation for mm -hmm. a really strong marriage. If if someone says no to that on every level and refuses to go, well, there's your answer. Because if they're not willing to work through this now, they're not going to be able to willing to work through the big stuff. I yeah. think it's, yeah. If he refuses to go, I think then you really do need to think, unless he can change it, 
Because all he really needs to do is calm the fuck down and stop getting excited about everyone else's feet. And, and that's happening in regards to where he's looking, right? So he's looking at the feet. And that he may not be able to resolve the foot fetish, be prepared for that. But he can resolve where he puts his eyes. Exactly. He doesn't have to be looking at your mom's feet, knowing that he's aroused by feet. Yeah, like you said, if someone's obsessed with boobs or an ass, are they just literally like wandering down the street, getting hard on staring at people's boobs and asses or whatever it is? So I think it is. It's it's about respect. And I, I can't stand that when you're with somebody and they oogle somebody else. I find it so disrespectful. And yeah. I just would, that is a deal breaker for me to be with a man that makes comments about other women's bodies or oogles other women. It's just, no. It's like, be like a woman and just sneakily look and don't move your head. That's what we do. You think women don't look? Women probably look more than men, but we're just not obvious about it. Well, you know where I, I found out about this? I know this might seem really naive, but I just didn't know that my partner, my very first boyfriend, I didn't know that he was checking out other guys until I watched Silence of the Lambs with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're like, where the fuck is this going to mm. go? And Hannibal Lecter was trying to give some advice to Clarice of how to catch this killer. And, and he's like, isn't it true, Clarice, that the eyes look over what they covet or something like mm -hmm. that? <laughs> and um, he was trying to give her advice that the guy, that the serial killer that they're looking for, probably saw his first victim a lot. And so he coveted something that she had. And that's when I realized, hang on, his eyes are going over those men when we go down the street. He's looking at their packages <laughs> and stuff like that. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, Hannibal Lecter told me that you're bad. <laughs> Keep your eyes forward. Because <laughs> it's not nice. And, and in some couples, that's going to be completely fine. That's something to be negotiated between you as a couple. If, you're ha if he's happy for you to check out men and women you want to do that and you're happy for him to look at feet and he wants to do that great but if it's something that makes you uncomfortable or you just don't like that and don't want that that's also great and he should respect that and he can respect that he wouldn't be the first man to control where his eyes go when he's with his wife exactly well good luck <laughs> sorting that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah good luck write us a follow-up um, letter and let us know how it goes that's the thing with this is people write in and then you just don't know what happens so keep us posted no please let us know and a final thought for me is despite all else that's been said this is definitely fixable it definitely definitely is not necessarily the, the foot fetish maybe but what i'll say is fixable is that the issue it doesn't have to be a problem for you guys you can you can sort it out yeah because it sounds like it wasn't that big of a deal and then you you feel like it's escalating and the problem is with the escalation and the lack of respect for you mm -hmm. and the mother thing. At least you didn't get a hard on looking at your mom's ass. I think that would be worse. <laughs> How would that be worse? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Her mom might have a really nice ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got their something. And you just, there are no perfect people out there. So what you've got to find is someone whose things you can deal with issues you can deal with and i guess you need to ask yourself is this something i can deal with when everything else is so good and i think yeah it, i mean it didn't it wasn't a deal breaker when he first told you about it so i think you definitely can get to a better place i think it's just communication and talking about it and being receptive and calm when you do mm -hmm. you got this instead of being like when you got a heart on looking at my mother's feet you pervert you want to just be like, use that mirroring technique from Chris Voss's Never Split the Difference. Just ask a question and then just repeat back a few little words. I just want to talk about your fit fetish. And just repeat back these key little words and just it strings people's thoughts together and it just helps them. They'll open up more and also know how you start that conversation is how it's going to end. So just be really calm, really loving. Use that mm -hmm. calm tone of voice and... It'll work out. And if it doesn't, then you're going to meet someone way better. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> you're going to be okay. But I keep the ring. Keep the ring. <laughs> what you don't want to be is 
six foot under and kicking yourself that you didn't give it a go. You know, if there's something afoot in your relationship, <laughs> it's it's worth exploring it. And, you know, if you're going to go toe-to-toe with him, start that discussion gently, as Caroline said. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, and you know, it, with time, your relationship can heal. Yeah. And find that soul of your relationship and bring it back together. So all puns aside, we are fucking terrible people, Daryl. And honestly, we won't, we're not like this in, in personal sessions. But hey, I don't know. We obviously like to laugh and that's how we deal with stressful situations. So it just is what it is. But thank you. I'm telling you, this is why we don't get more people writing in. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate that you did. And I'm honored that you would share your issue with us. Thank you. But I do think you need to get some, some more help, some more in-depth personalized help and not two therapists laughing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And if anybody wants to get a hold of us or tell us their story or get advice on their issues, WTF stories and advice at gmail.com. And if you want to train with us in hypnotherapy and laugh your ass off while you learn all about psychology and how to reprogram the subconscious mind, you can do that from pretty much anywhere in the world through Integrative Hypnotherapy Institute and the links in the show notes. And thank you so much for listening. Until next time. Thanks, guys. We love you. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.